Portland of any place in Maine has, you know, had uh, a difficult year with so much of the economy in the city revolves around the hospitality industry. Metropolitan areas in general have challenges with COVID that, that small and more rural areas don't have. So we really wanted to, you know, do a couple of things. It, plenty of magazines have done the Portland is such a hot place to eat and drink and shop. And we want to do some of that too. But we also wanted to look at some of the complexities of the city and look at the ways in which it's coming out of 2020 and what it's poised for next. Let's talk about a series of photos that was done by Sean Alonzo Harris, and it shows the city last fall when there was definitely a quiet that was unusual for Portland and an uncertainty that was kind of unusual for Portland. Overall, what were you hoping that he would provide for you with these pictures? He's one of these great photographers where you can give him a very general prompt, like we would like to see what Portland looks like at this crossroads. And he comes back with something that understands the mood. And so we just, he's a great street photographer. We sent him around town. I think a lot of the photos that he got do a nice job of juxtaposing, you know, for example, um, the grittier corners of Portland with sort of flashier new development. And then he had the opportunity, of course, to take these terrific portraits. Let's talk about just a, a few of the portraits. Uh, one of Hope Revelto of Little Chair Printing. Yeah, is a, is a printmaker and talked a little bit about how they had spent time in the city years ago and um, how the art scene has grown in particular. Um, we had the opportunity for one of our contributors, Genevieve Morgan, to go back and talk to some of the folks that Sean shot and just get their take a little bit on how the city has changed during their tenure. Another one of the Portlanders whom he shot, Joe Kings of Ultimate Car Care is a car wash. He and Genevieve talked a little bit about how he has seen in his decades in Portland, the city become a much more diverse place as well as a more welcoming place for businesses run by people of color. And he has been very involved in um, the black business community and the, and the BIPOC business community over a few decades. So he had an interesting take on that. And one last one, Athena Lynch, who's a sculptor and a multimedia printmaker who is an artist, yeah, that uh, I think Sean ran into at a gallery show. Uh, and among other things, she, well, you know, she kind of combined both of those conversations, talked a little bit about the art scene, talked a little bit about how she had moved to Portland from Richmond, I think, and uh, how, you know, her experiences in Portland, particularly as a person of color, uh, can sort of uh, compare to living in a more rural area of Maine. You've got a story about something I had never heard of before, and it's quite charming. A woman who runs an Old Port Historic Workout Tour. What's this? Yeah, and so I love the photography that went along with this. We had got to have a writer and a photographer um, tag along and uh, hang out with Lee Rush Olson, who has this terrific service where you sweat, you work, you do calisthenics, you run, you do exercises, and along the way, you get a little bit of an education as to some of the city's historic architecture and some of the stories of prohibition and the city's founding and odd, droll, little noteworthy happenings. Um, she's one part historian, she's one part workout guide, and I guess those things come together in a really fun way. If you're gonna write about Portland, you're probably gonna write sooner or later about food. You've got a piece on how Washington Avenue has turned into a rather unlikely restaurant row in the city in the last decade or so. I think this was honestly an excuse for uh, some contributors to just go eat and drink their way up the street, outdoor and masked, of course. Uh, but yeah, Washington Avenue, and we're not the first people to cover this. It's so interesting to see this go from a factory row, you know, e even within the span of the last decade and, and, and a lot of empty storefronts and things to having some of the best restaurants in the city. I'm very fond of Kong Tu Bat and Terlingua. Um, adventurous cuisine. And then, you know, there's great uh, Oxbow Brewery is one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, so it's a short item. Like I said, we wanted to do a little bit of showing what's fun to do around Portland. And especially as the summer kicks off, strolling up and down Washington Avenue is going to be real popular again. I hope, I think. It's no secret. You knew this going in that there are a lot of people in Maine who are not fans of Portland. They find the city and the people who live in it annoying. And you're <laughs> already hearing from some of those folks, aren't you? I mean, that happens, you know, the thing about our readers and about everyone who lives in and loves Maine is that we all have our favorite little pockets. And I think a lot of people who, especially from away, love Maine for its rural character. What we say to people, I think in the Ed note here and what we say to folks who write in or comment on Facebook or this sort of thing is like, look, regardless of what your favorite part of Maine is, if you care about the state, then you should care what's happening in Portland. Because if you're somebody who derives a living from fishing or farming, for example, then your livelihood and your world is likely impacted by how the hospitality scene is going in Portland and so on. It's all connected. And I think people understand that once they read through an issue like this. I hope so.